Heat on How Radio. Hope you're enjoying a, a wonderful cold evening. This is Nick Beat. We're going to be back with our first first guest, writer uh, Peter Kirby, talking about his book, Vigilance. <laughs> no, calm down. Okay. Getting Stupid fucking camera to turn on. Shit. Beat on Salute 89.5 FM on your dial on a cold wintry evening, January 21st, 2014. Hope you're having a great new year. And uh, I am. I'm having a great time. I've got a huge announcement, which is I've got a big book launch uh, poetry collection called Famous for Fallen. That's going to be released uh, February 4th at the supermarket, 268 Augusta Avenue, just south of college. S uh, doors open at 7 o'clock, starts around 7.30. It's uh, Lyrical Milker Press, and they're actually um, putting a whole show on with four authors, including myself. And that includes uh, Donna Langevin. Uh, Larry Hopperton and of course Norman Allen and myself and we'll be reading that night too and it's free to get in books are twenty dollars each but I have somebody that I've been so happy to get on the show uh, writer Peter Kirby who's had a book that I, I got in the mail uh, ages ago called Vigilante Season and really really happy to have uh, Peter uh, Kirby on my show Peter are you there my friend I'm fine it's good to talk to you Peter are, are you surviving the new year so far? What can I hear? I came back from uh, Mexico City and uh, Havana on Saturday to uh, this chilly cold again. You poor guy. It's killing me. It's killing you, but you had that Havana time. Yeah, you know how easy it is to wipe out those memories? <laughs> I, I hear you. This is Nick Feed on CIT Radio. We're talking to author, writer Peter Kirby. I hope you're enjoying the Howl Show, which is spoken word, music, art, and uh, talk. And uh, right now we're talking to Peter Kirby. A little later, we're going to be uh, talking to uh, a gentleman who uh, is the editor for Walrus uh, Poetry. And uh, we'll be talking to a couple of the winners tonight of uh, Walrus Poetry Review. And um, I hope you are enjoying the show so far. Peter, your book, Vigilante Season. Uh, which I quite enjoyed. Uh, it took me a long time to get back to you about it, but I'm just wondering, it's uh, Canadian crime fiction, uh, and it was launched in 2012. How long did it take? What was the gestation period before you well, finally the book complete? Uh, actually, no, it was, it was out uh, 2013. Uh, oh, 13, October. sorry. That's right. And gestation, it, it's the second book. Um, the first was uh, a year ago, so it was a year and a half. Definitely, I do know what that's like. Uh, I've got my own uh, uh, books out, uh, current one that's coming on February 4th. This is Nick Feet. We're talking to uh, writer, author, Peter Kirby. Peter is uh, practices international law with one of Canada's largest law firms. He was born in Cork, Ireland, and grew up in Brixton, South London. He has been recognized by the American lawyer as one of Canada's leading 500 lawyers and is called the star in international arbitration. Uh, bench for this uh, litigation. He lives in Montreal, but currently we're talking to him. He's in, in uh, Ottawa. His uh, author website is www.peterkirby.ca, all small case. And uh, we're also talking about a book, Vigilante Season. Uh, Peter, can I ask you, uh, the genre of, of crime fiction, um, why does it draw you? Well, what about it is, is the thing that sparks you? That's a... Uh that's something I'm often asked, and I, I, I think the answer is um, crime fiction is a great starting point to, to um, 
you have a story, you have a, a crime story, you've got the skeleton, but you can then, within that genre, um, deal with all kinds of other issues that come up. Um, uh, you know, observations of life in general. So it's, um, I find it's a very um, useful way to get across what you really want to talk about. I mean, yes, you're writing a crime fiction story, but what's in the book is not simply um, a mystery, uh, something to be solved. It's, uh, uh, I like to think of it as, uh, you know, a series of meditations on uh, life in general, <coughs> life in the big city, um, what we're all doing here. Okay. But it's, it's just a very useful vehicle. I think it's a, it's a handy vehicle because it forces you to sort of keep thinking of uh, structure, um, you know, as opposed to literary fiction, I find very, very difficult. Not mm -hmm. to read when mm -hmm. it's done properly, but to write it, I find it uh, more difficult. Peter, what's the difference between crime fiction? I thought crime fiction had, you know, detective stories built into it, uh, which is a sort of a mystery story, I guess. Yeah, yeah it, it, but what, what I'm trying to get at is it's not so much... Uh, you, I would like people to think, uh, to, to read the book, not, not simply for the story, okay. but for the background. Um, what does Kirby have to say about life in uh, downtown Montreal, as uh, my first book uh, involved homeless people? Um, what's that like? To, what's it like to be homeless? In vigilante season, a um, major part of the story is what happens to a community when politicians and the police sort of lose interest in, in the community. Um, and the, there's a, uh, a sort of a militia group that starts to exercise its muscle within that community. This is Nick B on CIUT's Hal Radio. You just joined us. We're talking to author, writer uh, Peter Kirby. He's originally born in Ireland, grew up in Brixton in London, and uh, we're actually talking to him from uh, Ottawa, but he's actually residing in Montreal. <coughs> Can I ask you, Peter, how did Linda Leaf Publishing hear about you? Did you just submit it to them? Did they ask for a submission? Uh, do you have uh, a long history with them? Ser serendipity. Uh, one of the most difficult things for all authors, uh, budding authors, is, is finding a publisher. And it, it, it's almost like a lottery because there's, there's an awful lot of good writers out there that are struggling to, to, to find publishers. And publishers are struggling with masses of manuscripts. I met Linda Leith in the street. I had seen wow. her sort of socially, met her in the street. We had a chat. I had said that you know my book, my ma I had a manuscript that had been shortlisted for best unpublished, and she said, "Well, I'm not actually doing uh, major length books. I'm I'm specialized in short books, but send it along. I'll take a look." And uh, she read it and liked it and uh, published. It's serendipity, uh, you know, which is. It's a message, I think, for budding authors is that you just don't stop trying. You have to, you know, get out there and, and keep keep trying to find a publisher or find other ways to get your work published. But there's no... It, so how did Linda it come, uh, come to see the book? I hadn't sent it to her. She... Uh, uh, just a, a, a random conversation, she said, send it. Wow. That's that's fantastic. You must have been over the moon. Uh, I was uh, disbelieving is the word. <laughs> disbelieving. <laughs> was yeah. I over the moon? Yeah, but at that point in time, I in fact sort of shelved it a little bit and was starting on other projects because you know that that notion of trying to get the first book published is so difficult for for authors that. Uh, it's very easy to get into the cycle of just, you know, more and more photocopies of the first chapter and sending them out, etc. It's, it's a disheartening kind of experience. And so very often you say, well, does it really matter if I publish? I, I'd like to write a second one. So, you know, I got started on a, on a second book. But it's, um, yeah, it, it pure happens chance. This is Nick. We were talking to author, writer, Peter Kirby. Uh, about his book, Vigilante Season. And uh, oh, by the way, Peter, where can people get the book? 
What's, what's the best places to go? Fine Fire. bookstores everywhere, I think. Oh, well, that's correct. No, no, but um, most of the independents are carrying it. Amazon obviously carries it. Uh, Indigo has sort of Indigo chapters. My my feeling is that they have fairly spotty coverage. Sometimes it's in there, sometimes it's not. But it's got major distribution. Go on the website, and I'll, I'll I, there are links to where you can buy it, etc. But uh, that that's a whole other issue. Is uh, trying to get distribution, uh, trying to find space for Canadian authors in that sort of uh, the, the mass market of uh, what's out there for, uh, you know, what the major bookstores will will uh, will stock. Yeah. Good independent bookstores generally will have it. I should say it was uh, the Quillen Choir um, did a survey of booksellers in Canada and uh, it was among the five recommended uh, mystery books for 2013. Wow, that's a fantastic so, but, compliment but to you. The, well, it's also a compliment to the independent bookstore in mm -hmm. Canada who are still sort of fighting the, you know, the Walmart type bookstore and uh, sure. are actually interested in finding books for their clients as opposed to simply finding the top, you know, stocking the top ten of everything from cookery to, uh, I don't know, kitchen towel. This is Nick Beat. We're talking to uh, Canadian writer, author uh, Peter Kirby about his book, Visual Any Season, which you can get in uh, bookstores near you, especially Indigo uh, chapters. Is it also in ebook form yet, Peter? Yes, it is. Uh, it's on Kindle and uh, Kobo and all, all the, uh, it's out there. If you want to buy it, it's, it's out there. Any idea how much it is? Good question. I think it's around fifteen bucks for the hard copy. For the ebook, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about four or five dollars. Four or five dollars? Okay. I think you, you, you've got. We, we just got one minute left in our interview with Peter Kirby, and very soon we're going to be talking to uh, the editor of uh, Walrus Poetry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, P Peter, can I ask you, uh, what was your, like? I can hear that accent in your voice a little bit. You still got that Irish in you. It sounds like, or am I mistaken? It, it was beaten out of me when I was a young kid. When I was about twelve, I my family moved to South London, Brixton, and yeah. I had a much thicker Cork accent. You know, uh, go away, I'm that boy. Uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> and into a working class Cockney school, uh -huh. where and I was wearing glasses at the time. I was this weak looking, strange child that had this accent and of course you know people would people the uh the tough kids in class would sort of hold me up against the wall and say you yeah, might say something yeah listen to him so very quickly you learn how to lose the irish accent i became a cockney and then when i was uh, 17 i moved to new york and nobody could understand me so i <laughs> sort of i lost the cockney accent and what I've got now is kind of a, I don't know, a, a strange sort of mixture. But uh, I, I think it, there's a lot of Canadian in there now. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can, you can hear that. I go into Tim Hortons and they hardly blink when I order. A <laughs> That's crazy. Actually, I, I, I don't order very much at Tim Hortons, but I could. You could. If I want, yeah. Sure. Peter, thanks so much for being on Al and... And again, congratulations on the success of your Vigilante season book. Thanks for having me on. It's, it's been a pleasure. Take care. Take care, Peter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Nick Beat on CIUT 89.5 FM on your dial. And uh, we're going to take a, a tiny musical break. And hopefully we will be back with our next uh, caller and a person talking about Walrus Magazine and the two winners -E of the uh, actual Walrus Poetry uh, review. Uh, they, we're going to be what talking about them a little later in the show. That's uh, Kateri uh, Lancia. Oh, okay. And um, I just want to say thanks again to all our uh, listeners and supporters for those who supported our show, our last uh, fundraiser. Our next one's coming up in April. Rapist, yes, that's the name. And we're going to be playing a track from uh, an album that they're currently putting together, her and Bernard. Right now, I have a wonderful guest on my show. Are you there, wonderful guest? I like to think of myself that way. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. I just need need you to be brought up into the. We just need to turn you up a little bit. I'm just barely hearing you. Oh, okay. How's there that? we go. Is that better? That's a lot better. Wal oh, Walrus. How did it get its name? Oh, you're talking to Michael Vista. Oh, I don't know how the Walrus got its name. I uh, I'm in it. <laughs> Happy to be in it. This is Brent Raycroft. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I've had, I've got so I, you know, I, I tend to be a wonderful guest. I we got so many so many people on the show tonight that I, I got mixed up. Sorry about that. That's, that's my fault actually. So how are you doing anyway? Hello. I'm excellent. Um, I don't have the flu. Um, I wanted to be there in person to meet you, shake your hand. Um, but this phone connection seems to be working. Yeah, you're coming in loud and clear. Good. Definitely. Good. Yes, Michael called me six months ago or so, or I did last, and said that I was shortlisted for the Walrus uh, Poetry Prize. And then a few suspenseful weeks later, I found out that I had received the Reader's Choice Award. Wow. And then, 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 then the poem appeared in the Walrus. It was a great boost. Definitely. Now, did you expect, you didn't expect this, obviously. Well, I did not expect to be shortlisted, I must admit. Um, just because one expects to be rejected, right? That's the cycle. That's the cycle for writers. Um, but I thought I had a poem that was pretty good and that had uh, an appeal that might work for a general readership. So I took a chance on sending it to the walrus. And uh, once I was on the short list, I thought I had a fighting chance because the short list was really short. And, um, and uh, yeah, people uh, made their online votes and uh, they seemed to like my poem. Can, can we co coax you to read the poem on air? You could, actually. I, I have it by heart, I think. Okay. Oops. Uh, scarecrow maintenance. The old man's itchy greatcoat fell to me, and given his complaint of its intransigence, I landed on the notion of storing it in the open. Now that he can't feel the elements, why not put this remnant of him in them? There's acid in the rain enough, enough UV, that what outlasted him may not outlast me. Get a pole and cross pole, fix them together, bent wire, screwing open, duct tape, whatever. The less seen of this part, the better. This is Nick Beat. Hope you're enjoying Hal. Hal's a spoken word show that also <laughs> showcases uh, poetry and art and also music. And we're going to be hearing some music a little later with Amir Brendan and also uh, Kill Your Rapist, which is a band that my friend Anna Coquette is in. And we've got Bernard here also who is also in the band, and we'll be talking to them in a, just a few minutes. How, how did, uh, how did uh, Walrus hear about you, hear about your work? Well, it was an open call. Um, I submitted the poem in the hope that uh, it would catch Michael this his eye, and he may have been feeling sentimental that day, or was looking at the uh, Remembrance Day schedule for the next issue, or maybe it was just, just my poem. But I like to think of all the possible other reasons that it might have gotten shortlisted. These things are a crapshoot, really. I mean, you can't take it too much to heart. Um, of course, I did take it very much to heart, and it was uh, it lightened my steps for many weeks. I'm just wondering how 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 do, how long has Walrus been going on for? How long well, has it been? Yeah. This um, is their 10th anniversary. I remember when they came on the scene about 10 years ago, they were pretty, I don't know, I did subscribe for a year or so, but it seemed kind of dry. And they have gotten much moister over the years. And uh, I think they have a, a, a really broad appeal now. And I think the, the magazine is set for a very long run. You know, it's sort of, it's like Canada's Harpers, if I may be so. Definitely, it's de definitely in that league. This is Nick Beat. Hope you're enjoying the Howl Show. A little later in the show, in about a minute and a half, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, Anna Coquette and, of course, Bernard, who's also in the band Kill Your Rapist, which is a controversial name to put up Molly. And we're going to be hearing a track um, by them. 
and that they're currently working on an album, and a little later we'll be talking to singer-songwriter Amir Brandon, playing a piece of his called Millions. Hope you're enjoying Howl. And at the end of the show, we're going to be talking to uh, one of the winners of the Walworths uh, Poetry um, Contest, and that would be Catherine Lantier. And I've actually talked to her father, Jim, a number of times on Howl. Uh, and I'm going to get down on my knees now and beg Don't Tom to stop that. playing with the mic. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You've adjusted it 55 times. I have a co-host tonight you do. who's driving me berserk already, and he's just been in here in 60 seconds. But anyway, thank you so much, my friend, for being on our show and sharing that poem. It's a magnificent poem, and congratulations my again. My thank you. Take care. You're okay, I live in Toronto. God bless you, my son. Anyway. My friend Brad Pitt in California. Brad Pitt, that's yeah. right. Brad Pitt. And his wife, Angelina, are friends. That's right, Tom. God bless it's you. Not to name drop there or anything. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along, as we say in uh, Radio Land. It's about 24 minutes after 10. Hope you're enjoying the house show. Uh, I am co-hosted again with uh, Tom Fisher. That's my name. The Magnificent. And he is here, and we are here in the studio, live out of Hart House in downtown Toronto, University of Toronto. But we have Anna. Anna is here. I actually saw Anna DJ. At my friend Dana McCool's, um, it was a group show uh, around Dufferin and Queen, and Anna's been kind enough to come into the studio. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was kind of a random way of meeting, but. It was. <laughs> it was. Sure. And Bernard is her Hey, Nick, how are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. You're in a group called Kill Your Rapist. Why that name? That's controversial to put a mountain. I think it kind of started off as a joke, as I think most things that Bernard Mays and I end up doing <laughs> kind of start off as. Um, yeah, it basically started off as an inside joke. I don't even know how we came about coming up with you that. You came up with it. I, it took some selling on me. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I was the brilliant genius that came but up with the name. Well, what really sold me in the end was just how polarizing the name is. Like, people <laughs> coming up and saying, you know, that's the best name ever. Or, <laughs> dude, you can't use that name. No, that's we a horrible, horrible name. <laughs> 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 Which, yeah, if you're going to do anything these days, you know, I'd rather be polarizing than... Oh, don't forget about We <laughs> gotta start framing some of our hate mail that we get. Yeah. What do they say in the hate mail? Um, we've had some things telling us that we are horrible human beings, and apparently, for some reason, our name is anti feminist, which I haven't really figured that one out. <laughs> we've had other feminists writing us saying that our name is great. So <laughs> I'm just gonna say we're gonna go with the majority vote on that one. <laughs> Sounds good. This is Nick Pete. We're talking to Anna Bernard of the group of Kill Your Rapist. Anna's also a DJ, which is how I actually heard her, and I loved the music you were playing. A apart from Kill Your Rapist, the DJ work, does that, uh, does that provide enough employment for you? Are you doing it full-time along with your group? Like how, how do you manage that? Um, it's something that's kind of in conjunction with our group. Um, we do DJ gigs. We actually have a couple of DJ gigs coming up this week, including on January 24th at the White House Project in Kensington Market. Um, we're DJing in between, well, at Finn's, um, who's a Toronto band's record release party. He did a track that I guessed it on for the album. So we're going to be there supporting that, which is pretty exciting. And yeah, we pretty much, Killer Rapist is just kind of all encompassing for everything. This is Nick Butte. We're talking to Anna Kukin and Bernard of. Kill your rapist, and why don't we uh, why don't we lay this on you? But before we do, uh, this track, can you set it up for us, Santa, before we play it? Um, yeah, this is the first single um, that we're releasing to lead up and give a taste of what the album will be like. We'll be releasing singles every few weeks on our Facebook page and SoundCloud, Bandcamp, all that good stuff. Um, and this first one is The Summoning. The Summoning, and this is Kill Your Rapist on CIUT at the by 5 FM. And How come the cat loves her? 
Because you know, I, I can never I'm do the same lady. thing. He's very much a cat. I, wow. have, I have three cats. Oh, see, well, there you go. Don't worry about it. You talked your point shared the cat away. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where did she Sorry go? about that. <laughs> Jeez, that was embarrassing. You have a very loud, booming radio voice. That's fine, too. Well, how are we going to catch her now? <laughs> Come here. Where is she? <laughs> She's okay, Pam. <laughs> We're not going to open any doors, don't worry. Yeah, there's not really anywhere she can run. Back on air in 30 seconds. Come to me. Okay, you can't see kitty cats out there. This is Nick B, the great and powerful. And sometimes they make it mild. Hope we're back with Howl Radio, which is uh, art, music, uh, spoken word, talk radio on CIUT 9.5 FM, which is a community-based, but also corporate. We also have corporate support and support from you, our listeners. I hope you're enjoying the Howl Show. We're in the second half now, and uh, you just heard a track. Uh, by uh, Kill Your Rapist. Kill Your Rapist. <laughs> kill it. <laughs> kill it. Hey, come on now. It's funny saying that word. <laughs> but um, not that I totally disagree with that, but uh, there is a lot of rape in the world. Let's, let's face it, I just saw a movie about it, which is uh, Life and Death in, um, I think it said Nanking, with the, the rape of Nanking, which is what the Japanese army did back in the 30s to. Uh, particular city in China. It's pretty horrible, intense movie to watch. Anyway, w uh, can I ask you again, not to be, I'm not being flippant about it. Okay, we, we sort of uh, talked about why you named it that, but why did you name it that? Um, or, or do you have an axe to grind in that area or, or, or something? Well, I think I definitely do come from a bit of a stance, especially as a woman, where I'm used to going on the subway and being harassed mm -hmm. by men. Wow. Okay. Um, as I'm sure every woman is, mm -hmm. it just comes to be second nature where you know you're going to get bothered, you just wow. sort of walk with big headphones, try to ignore it. Wow. And there is, and at the time whenever I come up with the name, there was a lot of rape things going on. Um, there was a stuff and fill rape case that had come out yeah. at the time. And yeah. I guess the name in a lot of ways, it's like, yeah, it's a controversial name, but in a way it's supposed to kind of take people aback and make mm -hmm. them say, oh, what? wait, what? And make them think. It's supposed to elicit a strong reaction. Bernard, you were not totally happy, as you said, with the name. I mean, you had to be talking. <laughs> <laughs> at, at first, as soon as I was told, I was like, oh, I can let you know. That's a nice <laughs> name. I had to think about it for a while at first. I think one of his things that he said was, will that ever be able to be on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's interesting because we just had it played on radio. This is the first time it's been on radio. Or is it the Brenner Airport? This is our, our radio debut. Oh, yeah. that's great wow. right to know. Yeah, I'm really we proud. Because of we just that. finished the track off literally like two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, what are you playing? Um, I play keyboards, bass, and produce. And okay. Yeah, so you produce stuff. this track? Yeah. Okay. And an album is forthcoming. You're just it's still in the yeah. Like yeah. I said, we're going to go the, the releasing songs as at it. No, as we make them, pretty much immediately as yeah. we make them. So we're okay. looking at putting up songs every two or three weeks. Yeah. So and then collecting probably for a release after that. Okay. Yeah. And please let us know about that. So yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Tom, yeah, it's on our mailing list. Oh, please. <laughs> no, you're ac excellent, Bernard. Tommy, any questions? Uh, how did you guys meet? How did you get together to form this band? Oh, um, we went through, I guess, the Heavy Friends project. Yeah, I had a, a project I was doing, like, uh, cover albums. I did three cover albums as kind of, like, I did them basically just recorded them at my studio with good friends. 
and release them as Christmas presents and free downloads. They're all up there on uh, Bandcamp right now as free downloads. Under if you look, search for Heavy Friends. Um, and yeah, we, I met Anna and we started recording that way, and then it kind of turned into a band that we had last year, which uh, didn't really take off the way we wanted. Was, yeah, we never yeah. really did much with it. Yeah, and then, and then no, for yeah. both, it was what we really wanted to do, so we kind of regrouped as a duo. And yeah. It's a little bit more eclectic, a little bit more outside of the rock and roll. So you're kind of like the outside Thompson Twins. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I think we can go with the Thompson Twins. And also Miles' like fun thing, too. I'd go more with Suicide or Cabaret Voltaire, maybe. Yeah, Cabaret Voltaire's good. Cockshoe Twins. Cockshoe Twins. Twins, that are twins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's it's fun because it allows us to play different instruments too. Like I know on one song, like I'm playing a kangling, or we have like a didgeridoo on one track. And what's well, a didgeridoo? I don't know what that's that, that thing that sounds like Australian, Australian tune. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is that what it sounds? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very epic. Yeah. Maybe we could we could do a didgeridoo sound together, the four of us. Let's see if we can come up with a sound. <laughs> oh my. Come on, you start it <laughs> Show us how to do it, Bernard. Mm, um, oh. put me on the spot. <laughs> there. Uh, there we go. So you're happy now? <laughs> Nick, that, that sounded like Elmer. Right. <laughs> you're right, it did. This is Nick Bean on CIUT 89.5 FM. If you just join us, I'm with my uh, sometime co-host, which is Tom Fisher. Tom, Mr. Sometime, and Mr. Sunshine, and I'm Mr. Glum. You're Mr. Sunshine. Mr. Nice Sunshine. I'm Mr. Sometime Sunshine. That's right. And yeah. we're at Heart House, actually on the main floor. Usually we're up on the third floor, but tonight we're on the main floor because there's some bands up there doing some live recordings. And we're w here with Anna and Bernard of a group called Kill Your Rapist. We've got about three minutes left in our interview, and hope you're en enjoying it. Where are you guys playing? Where can people see you? Um, well, right now we've been focusing more on getting this album finished, so we've been doing okay. more DJ gigs. Um, so I actually have a friend of mine who's doing his album release that we guested on a track on his I Die same, uh, record, and he's doing the album release at White House Project in Kensington on Friday at Where 10 p.m. Where is the White House? It's on Augusta Avenue. It's like um, an art gallery co-op kind of space. Is that the lower Kensington so people can, lower Augusta, um, so people can find it? Yeah, I think it's like kind of like mid on Augusta, like midway. It's like an upper story. If you just type in White House Project, oh, really you find there, it. Yeah. yeah, it's for um, a band Sins. So there's a few other bands playing as well here in Virence and uh, Candle Eater are also all playing and we'll be DJing in between. And then on February 21st, we also have another show that we're DJing at called No Pussy, which will be at <laughs> Creatures <laughs> Creating, um, which is at 822 Dundas West. And we'll be playing that with um, Gates, Bin nin Binge Ninja, Hammer Hands, and Good People. And there's a bunch of artists showing as well. No so. Pussy. I know, okay. right? <laughs> well, <that's Wow>. right. <laughs> You're just laying it off me tonight. Hey, what can I say? It's all Russia. about controversy pussy now. Pussy Power was the one in Russia. <laughs> Pussy Riot. Pussy, pussy Riot. riot. They just got out of this prison. This is a pussy hospital. year, man. 2013 has been a big pussy year. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, every every year, year is pussy year. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. I didn't say it, Bernard. You have like, you know, Black History Month. They could do like a pussy month. Oh, God help us. <laughs> By the way, Black History Month. Thanks for that segue. That's next month. <laughs> Black History Month is coming up, and I've got a special uh, February 4th show that I've already done actually pre-recorded because I'm going to be at my book launch at the Supermarket Club. But we've got a special show with our old friend Wakefield Brewster is going to be on to be interviewed about a couple of tracks from uh, his old album. We're going to be talking about Maestro Fresh West, that he's the kind of the godfather of Canadian uh, hip hop. And uh, we're also going to be playing a couple of tracks from, uh, uh, what's his Buna, Buna from Buna Fight, which is a really good album. Can you get Jesse Jackson for that show? No, I can't get Jesse Jackson. Can you Jackson dig up Martin Luther King for that? No, but you know who we're working on? Who? Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson Five. Yeah, nice. just we are. <laughs> wow, we may great. have awesome. an interview with Jermaine hopefully this year. And we're working on it. What is the imp I hate to say this, uh, ask such a cliche question, but what's the influences for you guys? I mean, we did mention Cocteau Twins and. Cabaret Voltaire, what would you say? I Bobby think it's so broad. It's a big one, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have like a pretty broad range of influences. I think one of the things we've been trying to do is not really, 
like try to sound like any one kind of genre. We're trying mm -hmm. to just sort of we go in the studio, we start writing things and messing around with stuff, and you know what happens happens. <laughs> yeah, what stays in Vegas happens. How does that go? What happens in Vegas? What stays happens in, in Vegas stays, stays in Vegas. Vegas. Is that kind of like that? <laughs> the same concept or? Yeah. <laughs> I love Bernard. Metaphor. He's just going along with my dumb ideas. Just to make me feel better. <laughs> Thanks, <Mike. laughs> This is Nick Pete. Hope you uh, are enjoying the house show in the second half of the show. It is. Let's check the time out. Come on. We don't need another time. 10.40. That's time is meaningless. <laughs> Reading <laughs> teachers are supposed to do. Time is eternal, buddy. Timelessness. Do you ever read the mystics? It's all timelessness. Do you realize what you just said is a, a massive contradiction? Time is eternal. <laughs> <laughs> Any oh, idea? Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. That's, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's poetry. Time is eternal. Yeah, I guess we could build, like a poem. <laughs> build a poem on that song. The end of time? The beginning of time? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Well, if time is eternal, there would be no beginning or end. No time like the present time. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. No time like the present time. We've got a, a minute and a half uh, left in our interview. I hope you're enjoying it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the music that we played. What was the name of the track one more time? Uh, the Summoning. And that's going to be available yeah. later tonight on our uh, SoundCloud and our Bandcamp pages. Right. You what can is find SoundCloud? it on Facebook. For those who don't know who sa what SoundCloud music is. Site. Um, music site, right? Yeah, it's a music streaming site where you can post files and have it played back. I quite like it. because I like it, too. It's great. Yeah, because you can post. you got to uh, get right into the microphone. Because you can post uh, you know, actual waveforms or 16-bit files yeah. as opposed to MP3s, which is the death of music, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Being yeah. Having spent my life being a music producer, yeah, it's my enemy, the MP3 format. Why? Because it sounds like crap. <laughs> uh, it's not music. It's like it's great if you just want to like hear what something sounds like. If you're interested in maybe buying the actual record, it's kind of great for that as a you know a, a small file to be able to email. But as far as what has become the form that most people listen to music at, it's just sad. It's, it's yeah, sad. It's kind of so completely yeah, it's backwards. I want to thank you for your both. For, for being in the, in the studio with uh, me and my friend Tom, my co-host, Tom you Fisher. Thank you. Love the track. I love that kind the of track music. Was really I grew up on it. And it's sensational, right? Thanks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> a certain vibe, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, thank you so much again, Anna. Uh, great DJ. You're a really good DJ. I oh, love what she was do doing that night. Did I request anything? Um, no, I don't think anyone actually. I think mostly people just kept coming up and being like, what the H are you playing <laughs> right now? <laughs> what is this weird sounds coming from the speakers? You, you're very unusual. What you play is, I've never heard that before. So that was, that was very cool. Mix, that's new <laughs> and old. We are now going to cut to Amir Brenda's uh, song. It's called Millions. And we'll be back, hopefully, with Amir himself. Uh, to 10.48 p.m. This is Nick Beat on HAL Radio in Amplify FM. Thank you both. It was very yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sure. <laughs> no, you just got to turn in this direction. Hey, go. That's <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Oh, right. shit. She's down here now. Grab her. There she is. Whoa. Hello. Oh, 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 God. God. <laughs> She's right here now. There you go. There you go. Look at her. Oh, it's so many grab her. You got it? Hey, Pikachu! Pikachu! Uh, you got away with cats because you, you got three of them. You know yeah. what to do. What are you doing? What are you doing? Kitty. Yeah, I haven't had a kitten far. for a long time. So. Oh, oh my so God. nice. They're so <laughs> tiny, my cats. It's like you, you might break it back. And then you can really? They're big cats? Yeah. They're very spoiled. Yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> three, kittens cat and spoiled. three cats and two dogs right now. Nick, who do you have on next? Who do you yes. have on next? Brandon? Uh, Amir? Brandon? You, both. you do a good show, buddy. You have a good flow. What a beautiful song this is. I You're know. missing the words. Heard it. Wow. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Okay, we're back. This is Nick Beat on CIT 89.5 FM. And you're listening to Howl, which is spoken word music, mostly Canadian. We try to really showcase Canadian poets, writers, artists, and uh, we occasionally have international artists, of course, on the show. But that was Amir Brandon. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful track, Millions. Wow. That is such a gorgeous millions, track. Millions, eh? Millions. What about billions? He's getting to that, Tom. <laughs> Hopefully, Amir will be calling at 10.48 p.m. 
that was the arranged uh, time for him to call us and we'll talk to him. Is 1049 on okay? Yeah, 1049 is okay too? fine and then we'll have a brief interview with him brief. and then we're going to be talking to uh, Kateri Alantier, Al Al right. uh, who is one of the winners of the Walrus uh, Poetry. I am the uh, Walrus. Contest. I am the Walrus, Tom. No, How are you doing, Tom? Walrus, you're the Walrus. Yes, are you coming to my uh, launch? I oh, hope? sure, February 4th, uh, Super Market. It's right? my birthday. On Augusta, right? Super On Augusta, Market, Augusta Big Yeah. $20 for books. $20 handmade for books, books, right? That's right. Yeah. Handmade yeah. books for Luciana Giacobelli, a lyrical miracle prince. And of course, there'll be three other authors uh, Donna uh, Langevin, of course, Norman Allen, yeah. and uh, Larry Hopperton. So what time is that happening for uh, Doors season? open at 7, yeah. uh, and uh, it starts around 7 30. And that's your birthday, incidentally. It's also my birthday. So it's going to be a wonderful day. I'm going to have tons of friends there. Hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll have a great time, I, I hope. Well, we always do, right? We, we usually do. Yeah. That's a better, better way of putting it. <laughs> it's about 10 47 p.m., uh, and uh, a cold, cold, cold minus 20 night uh, in Toronto, Canada. And uh, But I hope you're enjoying our show. How? We got warm hearts in Canada. We make up for those minus 20 nights. Everybody's warm in Canada and polite. That's true. Especially if you've got a loved one you can warm up to. Ooh, nice. So, but you had an interesting little. Uh, yeah, good oh, warmth in the yeah, sun. Yeah, it was yeah, in good Florida warm with time. a lovely Tanya Hummingbird. It was a very good time. The Miami uh, people are quite friendly, and they're, it's a lovely city because it's surrounded by water. And you've got Star Island where all the movie stars live, and you've got Bell Harbor, and you've got, of course, the most famous beach of all, South Beach. South Beach. Now, why is that famous, Tom? Well, we got to the Versace house there, where Versace lived right on the beach. Who's Versace? The guy that the big designer. He was there. The twenty really? million, twenty million dollar mansion. That was smack right on Ocean Drive, and people take photos in front of it. This is the this is the wow. house where he was shot in front of the house. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, actually, it's a beautiful house. Look it up on uh, Google. I will. Yeah. We have Amir Brandon on the phone. Amir, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. That is a beautiful track, Amir. A millions. Thank you, Amir. Very romantic song. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I started it. Yeah, please, 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 please do. So I originally wanted to start learning to play guitar, and I thought that guitar is way too tough of an instrument just to begin with. So I actually decided to go with the ukulele. And when I started playing the ukulele, I was just messing around with it, and I thought, like, oh, these are some cool chords. So I started putting some a melody to that chord. Very nice. And then from there, I started putting lyrics to, to, to that melody, and... I guess that's how it went. It's a beautiful song. That's all I could do. Millions. Where did the title come yeah, from? Yeah, the title. The title Millions came from, usually uh, when I'm writing a song, I just start with the lyrics, and I say, like, oh, that's a, that's a powerful, either that's a powerful phrase or that's a great word, and I decide to make up the title. But um, the word millions, I guess I use it as a symbol just because usually nowadays we're so caught up in, in our jobs and in our life in general, trying to make other people proud and trying to keep busy that we forget about the little things and how important they are. And that's something that I've been doing. I've been so caught up in, in my music and trying to promote myself that I started, I guess, straying away from the little things, like hanging out with your friends and talking to your family and things like that. So millions is referring to, I guess, the symbol of, of what we call love. Okay, and nice. Uh, Mira, we, we've got uh, a couple of other tracks uh, that we're going to play at other times uh, that are uh, equally uh, excellent. Where did you record this? I recorded this one at my friend's place, actually. Wow. Uh, I'm a music major at York U, and originally when I wanted to get into music, I was worried just because uh, the program is very technical as opposed to practical, in the sense that most of the courses are very, like, reading the books, doing the theory, that I was worried that it wouldn't be for me, but I found that all the people that I've met, I've worked with so many people, and it's been great just for connections and cooperating. And yeah, this, uh, a couple of my songs I've actually worked with a great friend of mine, his name's Max River, and he's also a singer, songwriter, and a producer. And yeah, we, we did a great job with this song, I think. Definitely, definitely, definitely. This is Nick Pete, we're talking to Amir Brenner. Amir, where do people go to hear your music right now? Well, uh, the thing about that is that I'm trying so hard to 
have so many different places for people to listen to my music. Like somebody told me to get sound like, SoundCloud account, so I got a SoundCloud. But uh, the most popular one I think is my YouTube channel, just because I started that back in 2009. And um, what I did was I put up some covers to start with, and that's like when covers started becoming popular to put on YouTube, right? So um, I got some subscribers from that, and then I decided to start putting my original music up there as well. It's it's excellent music, uh, Amir. I mean, I wish we had more time. We got a minute left in our interview with Amir Brandon. Hope you enjoyed his song Millions. After that, we're going to be talking to one of the winners of the Walrus Poetry Contest, which is uh, Kateri uh, Lantier. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, and she'll be calling right after this interview uh, with Amir. Uh, Amir, I definitely want you back on the show, man. I'm sorry it's so short. The interview itself. Thanks so much. Yeah, no worries. I'd, I'd love to talk again. Definitely, we're going to have you back, uh, and we're going to play more tracks of his because that that million song is just fantastic. Amir, congratulations again. Awesome, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Take care, and thank you for being on, Al. Thank you, Amir. Thank you for sure. Bye. Okay, take care. Bye bye. This is Nick Beat with Tom Fisher on CIUT 89.5 FM on your dial, and we're also on the worldwide internet at www.ciut.fm. We're heard all around the world. If you go to that site, you go to live. You can hear our any of our shows on CIUT live. Remember, Sex City is coming up at 11 o'clock uh, after this show, so stay tuned for more CIUT programming. We're also going to start having our fundraiser announcements very, very soon, in about a month or so. We have fundraising coming up in the middle of April. This is Nick Beat, of course, and I am a poet, writer, broadcaster, and hope you are enjoying the final uh, five or six minutes of how. We have Kateri on the phone. Kateri, how are you? Hi, Nick. I'm fine, thanks. Am I pronouncing your name right? Is uh, I think you're doing a good job, yes. Okay. Kateri yeah, Lantier. Is it Lantier? Lantier, yes. Lantier. And you are one of the winners of the uh, Walrus uh, Poetry. Uh, yes, of the Walrus Poetry Prize. I won the Judges Prize. Um, wow, nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, which was uh, really thrilling to me because the judges were a fantastic poet. Um, and so that's, you know, that's, that means a great deal. Ken Nostock and Katya Stubisek and uh, Michael Vista also. What's so, the prize? So, um, what was the prize? The prize was uh, $2,500. Wow, that's <laughs> a lot for third prize? For one poem. Is that for third prize? <laughs> um, that, that's the third, that, that was the third prize. And um, also the poem appeared in the December issue of The Walrus. And wow, that's lovely. They made that much money for one poem. Yeah, it's wow. amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Nick's so eyes are watering. Right. Yeah, no, my eyes are bug eyed. Yeah, he now. wants to do it. Yeah, I want to do it now. Yeah. That's great. Right, that's great. Right. <laughs> well, when's the next one, Calorie? Tell when's me. the next one? The, yeah. next, the next contest next yeah. year. <laughs> Enter. Can you, you can believe answer. that? $2,500 oh, really? a poem. That's pretty costly. Well, that, that is amazing. Do you have a poem? Yeah, let's hear the winning poem. Yeah, let's hear the winning poem. Yeah, I'd like to hear it. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, it's called The Coin Under the Leftmost Sliding Cup. Did you feel the earth move? That was our tectonic dance party. The world is a crowded club with all the exits blocked. I might sound like a goose in a, an opera gown, but I say again, I love you. I'm tired of all this thinking at the very top of my lungs. If only my fingers could keep up, then the dialogue in my head wouldn't unscroll like a dirty screwball in underwater slow-mo. What if the truth of desire lies in Aesop upside down, where the fox's teeth are the unattainable and the grapes full of rationalizations? I'm not too cool to care, though. Nature and I have a lover's quarrel. I adopted the strut of the peacock and the nightingale's nightgown. After 15,000 texts, can we say we have a past? My love for you is ephemeral, elliptical, ecstatic. Love to me was cotton candy, spangled, collapsed, Grit. With you, it's sadness sugared out, light on a suspension bridge. Sport with me. I am the coin under the leftmost sliding cup. Right, left, double crossing. There, now you're in my pocket. Cell phone, falter, cigarette, gun. We like to set fire to our palms. Rome burns as I photograph flowers or wear them as a bra. Call it playing with fire. Call it connect the dots lightning. Whenever we run down to the lake, the lake ascends sky mountain. Streetlights and earthbound lunatic courting June's too perfect leaves. These gardens are a plein air perfume factory, drunk on their own power. The spaceman loves the gumball machine. 
beautiful, beautiful. But each time you took her by the arm, she lost another sweet eye. It's curtains for you, Day. Stars eye us from the stage. Ours long ago, we the brailest kids. Long walk, short pier. That's a lovely poem. I can see why it won the big prize. Thank you. Thank it's got a, it's got a, it's almost like she's captured the, the, the spirit of the age. Do you find that? Like the spirit of this 2014, what's actually going on with, in people's minds and hearts and with technology and the, the, the mention about the text. That was very interesting. You take it all over the board. Yes, yes. Um, it's a couplet, so uh, it's two lines each. And uh, there, it's a loosely based on the on a form called the Gugel, which is um, originally Pers well, Persian. Uh -huh. They're written in um, uh, often Urdu, and they're still they're written to this day, but and written in English as well. So um, it takes great leaps with, from one to one stanza to the next. They're uh -huh. they're quite disconnected in that way, which is I guess very much the way our minds work in our to um, the kind of uh, distracted, disconnected way we live, but um, thank you very much for saying that. That was, that was very kind. How did, well, dear, how did you hear about the walrus? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've been aware of the magazine since it launched, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I've actually, they, they only started the contest, uh, I think, last year, so this is just the second year, and I have actually never entered a contest before, but I've been writing poetry for many, many years, um, so uh, this year I thought, well, I'll give it a try. <laughs> And you know, it, that sh you're, you feel a bit of shock to be shortlisted. I think that's Brent was saying. Um, yeah. So. Whereabouts are you? Where do you live? In which country? Uh, I'm sorry. What? Are you in Canada? Am I in Canada? I'm in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Toronto. Is it the way <laughs> <laughs> the reason that has, is the, the way the poem is written, it sounds like you're somewhere off. Of of a beautiful pier. And I agree with that. I felt yeah. like really? I felt like you yeah, in the USA and you like find that. Florida or North Carolina in an ocean. The keys. I'm picturing yeah. a pier and I'm picturing you walking with your lover there by the pier. I put you in a trance. Yes, <laughs> yes, you did. Good, that's my goal. <laughs> you're Catherine, well, we'd love to have you back on the show Thank again and do more poetry, please. I would be delighted. Thank you very much. Let's 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 do that soon. Thank you so much oh. for being on, Alec. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Keep sharing. My pleasure. Keep yes, sharing with thanks. you. You're nice. welcome. That's Catherine Relancier. Uh, actually, we've had her father, uh, Jim Walsh, on the show a number of times. This is Nick B. We're wrapping up now, Tom and I. Tell me anything to say before we wrap off. And Sex City is coming up on Saturday, UT. And Lovely then, poems. Great music. Yep. Fun show. Fun show. Definitely. This is Nick B. with Tom Fisher. Hope you enjoyed our show. Bye, everyone. And uh, I'll be back in a couple of weeks, sort of, the pre-recorded show, celebrating Black History Month's hip-hop show. Take care. Poetry. Can I get can I get it?